Keynote speaker for this session on business is an economist and management expert. He is also the founder of Center for Value in Leadership, CVL. Welcome, Professor Pat Utomi. I am really excited and pleased to have this privilege uh, today to share some thoughts with you on something that has become enormously fulfilling for me as a person. Uh, I'd like to say that quite a number of years ago, I began to talk about the enormous comparative advantage that Nigeria possessed in its culture. I began to try to persuade people that Nigeria could dominate the world, not through oil, but through the talent of its young men and women. At that time, I didn't get much listening. I urged that very specific effort go into encouraging the organizing of an emerging industry for it to become globally competitive. I didn't get much listening. But I'm glad today that people are talking about rebasing Nigeria's GDP. And part of the star of that process is selling culture. Thank you all for making my dream come true. Uh, many years ago, I began to organize free workshops at the Lagos Business School. Uh, some may remember those. And they were around Nollywood in some instances, and the general distribution of products from the industry. I recall one of those workshops, um, my saying to people that American business is globally dominant in many ways because one of its businesses has created cultural imperialism. And that business was Hollywood. As people think and act or pretend to be more American than Americans because they are hooked onto Hollywood, American products move around the world. And so it not only had the power of advancing the culture product, which is the output of American music, uh, uh, Hollywood, and so on and so forth, it had the additional power of advancing the interest of other American businesses. And so it was important for us to see what we were doing as a special. Now, it finally came home to me a couple of years ago when a very dear friend of mine, a Nigerian doctor in California, who is a wonderful person at heart and volunteers his time, and does a lot of pro bono work. He and a group of doctors, quite a number of who were Nigerian, had annual medical missions that went out into uh, several poor African countries. They usually went to Central African Republic, uh, um, Democratic Republic of the Congo, and so on and so forth. And my phone rings one morning, and the number is strange, and I'm wondering what's going on. And, uh, and he says, hey, you know where I'm calling from? I said, no. He said, I'm, I'm calling from Kinshasa. I said, well, I know with your medical missions, you go everywhere. He said, but I, I want you to listen to this. He says, we're driving around. It's campaign season in the country. And the big billboards go Kabila, Iwe, Kabila, Iwe. And I say to myself, do some people around here speak a Nigerian type language? So I asked. And people say, no, 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 no. You mean you don't know? I said, no, why? I said, that comes from Nollywood. The capo, the Tito capo, the real big man is hailed Iwe. And so Kabila, if he wanted to be the real man, had to be Iwe. This was Nigeria's culture industry having the kind of power across the continent that I had always hoped it would have. But it went beyond Africa, because I, I was speaking at the World Bank annual meeting uh, not long after that. And one of the World Bank gentlemen talked about a trip 
to uh, at Fiji Islands. They were doing some work in the Fiji Islands. And they come up on this small, more or less hut. And this family it has a small television set. And then there's a pile of video cassettes. And those were Nollywood films. Finally, our country is about to claim its heritage by looking more and more at its comparative advantage, which is not oil. It's the talent of its young men and women. It's called show business. And because it's called show business, it is a business. And it's got to be treated like a business. I think that to a large extent, presently we tend to look at it as something people enjoy doing, which is good. And as a business teacher, I will tell you that if you truly want to make money, don't look for something that makes money. Look for something you like doing. And do it so damn well, because if you do it well, somebody is going to be willing to pay for it, and you will get rich. Not because you are looking for money, but because you have done something very well. And so people who are in this business because they love it, because they like the glitter, because they love the um, fun that goes with it, that's OK. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But they are in business. And so they have to learn to apply the things that have been developed by people who have studied enterprise through generations to find how best to deliver value and cream of value for the value that they are creating. And one of the areas that I have um, spent a little time around in recent uh, uh, months is the area of distribution of the products that come from the industry, not as a personal uh, business passion, but as something that comes out of another thing that I have done for years. I have typically uh, played the role of a business angel in working with entrepreneurs, most of them very young entrepreneurs, to help channel their energies, to help with guidance in terms of corporate governance, in terms of networking and all of that to make their businesses come alive. Indeed, a couple of years ago, I wrote a book titled Business Angel as a Missionary. And that book is essentially a collection of, of cases of companies that I got involved in building from ground level, including uh, two or three that I made it to Nigerian Stock Exchange from ground zero. And I, in that role, I have met up not too long ago with a very young man who had some very interesting ideas about distribution. And I've worked with Ahim to try and bring this idea uh, to the fore. And so in the main, my comments today flow from what has happened in this exchange with him over the last couple of years and the things that we have tried to put in place to help solve the distribution problem of the industry. Of course, at the heart of the problem of the industry in distribution is how intellectual property is managed and who gets the benefit of the value that is created uh, in that industry. I mean, millions and millions of copies of products of Nollywood and the entertainment industry uh, have flowed into the world. Um, among the figures you see is that more than $52 billion have flowed out since uh, that 1992 production by Kenneth uh, Nebwe, who incidentally I was watching yesterday night uh, on one of uh, uh, the movies. Um, um, but the question is, who has had the benefit of the enormous value that has been created? With no substantial support from government, and this is a very important point to make, but there's always a time for pardon. Uh, the industry has risen to become a major contributor to the Nigerian economy, as we have seen from um, the uh, GDP uh, rebasing. Um, although one must say that there has been effort, and that effort has not gotten as far as it could or should get because the industry has not effectively constituted itself into a major 
force in affecting policy. I know that a couple of years ago, the Ministry of Information set up a committee to look at a film fund for, for the industry. Uh, Frank, um, I was um, Minister of Information at the time, and um, I had the privilege of serving as chairman of that committee. Um, Falabi uh, Desanya, who was managing director of Film Corporation at the time, was coordinator secretary of that committee. I think a fair amount of work was done uh, there. I know that some effort has been made, but it's not quite gone as smoothly as it should go to become a source to power the industry to uh, reach the possibilities. But I think that if we have a strong stakeholder group that works in an organized and systematic way, uh, some of the value will come from down. Uh, my guess is that because the entire industry just sort of happened, there is a tendency to think of things in it will sort of happen. And it brings me to a real problem that I find in our country. Um, somebody defined it recently as the culture of kumin, kumata. Just do it like that. We must stop this kumin value system because it means, it matters. And when we have the appropriate value of organizing properly, we will get more of the outcome that we, we deserve. Nollywood may be the th third largest in the world. Our music and artists may be the most popular on the African continent and getting bigger in Europe. It truly remains that the story on an economic front is still a very sad one. This is not an attempt to play down the successes that have been achieved. As a matter of fact, I think everyone in the industry deserves a national honor for taking the industry as far as it has come. You will agree with me that nothing has changed very much in the last 20 years, and we need to begin to get things flowing in a more organized way. We need to inject better ideas of how to organize uh, uh, businesses uh, into how the industry uh, runs. There are a number of issues mitigating against having an effective distribution uh, system uh, for products of culture in our country. From poor infrastructure to weak support of intellectual property rights issues, uh, it's, um, it's, uh, it's uh, Mba around by any chance. He's not around. You know, I know he's moved on from his old role uh, to a new one, but it's an issue that I have tried to uh, engage him on uh, uh, in the past. But I think that there's really a lot of work to do sensitizing people about the essence of property rights. It's not by accident that the US government invests so heavily in trying to fight property rights violations. Because once people understand the benefit of property rights and, and its stimulating effect in terms of creating new products, then I think all will be more cooperative except the people who deliberately try to game the system. And it's important for this kind of campaign against piracy, fake products, uh, uh, um, which seems to be very dominant uh, around us here. A good example of how piracy has, uh, was curbed will be from the example of a company that I am actually sort of very familiar with called Vitafoam, uh, which tried to re reduce pirated uh, uh, foams in the market in the uh, mid to late 1990s. During that time, it was difficult for anyone to identify original foams from fake ones. The retailers were a major culprit. We couldn't tell which retailer was genuine or fake. It might have more than a decade, it might have taken more than a decade to solve the problem, but there was a concerted effort that was well thought through from the very onset. And Vitaform started creating its own branded retail outlets and informed the public where these outlets were located. Today, branded Vitaform retail outlets are seen everywhere in Nigeria, with most of them certified 
by Vitafoom, but owned by individuals who were essentially the uh, franchise uh, operators. I think that there is a lesson that can be learned uh, from this. To really solve the problem, uh, piracy challenges the industry that there must be one, a trusted and distribution company or brand. It, the company must be able to make products easily accessible for purchase and by consumers nationwide. The price must be competitive and the products must be unique and meet standards. Knowing this has always made me question efforts at finding solutions to piracy, mostly efforts from public agencies. I think it has always been more a surface approach rather than an honest interest in finding lasting solutions. And this is partly because of goal displacement in public bureaucracies. Uh, one of the most important discussions of public organizations given many years ago uh, by a fellow called Charles Perrault, and he talks about goal displacement in public bureaucracy, where private goals replace formal organizational goals. And we tend to have a lot of that in our public agencies. And so while we mouth platitudes to a goal, in reality, you don't see the passion in implementing in a way that will achieve the goal that is in a set of. So knowing this, it means that we either reform public agencies or we take making those things happen away from the domain of public agencies we're going to get the results we want. Uh, taking a leap from what the American government did it was clear that they had an understanding of the industry, they used their resources to fund distribution and promoted their products and entertainment company, and at the time, we were so used to entertainment content from the United States. It was a deliberate effort from American government to promote America through its film industry. It was clear that when the American government supported their entertainment industry, they understood the dynamics of the industry and had a goal to turn the industry into a foreign earner for their country. Aside film being a strong tool to tell our story and promote our culture, it was a huge, it has impl huge implications for economic uh, uh, development in our country. Now, I'll just go quickly uh, uh, through this stuff uh, to the heart of the message here, that it is possible to find ways of getting around this in our country. Uh, I will consider it unfair to come out here today to talk without doing something to find a solution to this. I remember I had a program at Lagos Business School that brought people together um, from the industry. Uh, we have also at the Center for Values in Leadership, uh, where our mission is to build value-driven leaders by empowering young people with leadership skills and values. We've been working with a young man, Apollo Ikani, who I consider um, to be a very resilient young man determined to launch a nationwide distribution platform. Uh, he's the person I was referring to earlier in my comments. And Paul has spent a lot of time looking at what we do and sharing with us his thoughts, and we find his ideas uh, uh, quite interesting and uh, will support skirting around some of the big challenges faced by this industry. Our idea was to set up an alternative distribution structure that will better serve the interests of both content owners and consumers. So we set up Exodus Entertainment with the sole aim of effectively distributing Nigerian entertainment products, CDs, DVDs, and magazines to all of Nigeria. We started by carrying out an ex extensive research, and since late last year, we've been operating that platform. With our platform, consumers from anywhere in Nigeria can simply reorder or order a CD or DVD or magazine and it will be delivered to the consumer's doorstep. One huge challenge faced here was pricing. The fact that we have to deliver at the consumer's doorstep already means that the product will come at the premium price. So we invested in logistics and built a unique delivery system with FedEx Resta. As it stands today, we deliver CD to anywhere in Nigeria as low as 200 Naira. 
for DVD for as low as 490 Naira, and magazines sell for the same retail price. Aside ordering online or from your mobile phones, a consumer can order by calling our dedicated line or at the bank, and we will deliver to the consumer. There is also a payment on delivery option available only in Lagos uh, for now. Essentially, this is the thrust of Exodus Entertainment, and I am convinced that with this kind of initiative, and competition is welcomed in any of these things, where you can assure that the right quality can get to the people speedily and with certainty that it's coming from the source, and therefore that the uh, intellectual property rights are retained by the producer of that property, I have no doubt that the industry will grow in leaps and bounds. Our challenge is a challenge of creating partnerships that work, and this is an example of one partnership that I believe will serve the industry well. So I want to encourage uh, the kind of idea that has come out of Paul and to say that this industry has enormous possibilities if it explores these kinds of frontiers. I thank you all for keeping steadfast in the course of making this industry the core of how our nation claims its major comparative advantage and makes it a source of competitive edge by building a global value chain of cultural products that will keep Nigeria up there dominant, thriving. Cheers to you all. Thank you.